think and what we make up in our heads about who they are as people and what their lives are like and what they should or shouldn't be doing. But in actuality, all we know is that on Sundays or a few days a week, these guys come out and they participate in, in a game. And we rally around that. We need to rally around everybody. We need to rally around them when they're hurting. We need to rally around them when they're in need. Not just when they're on top. And uh, with that being said, we're going to move on to something a little more exciting, a little more doable, uh, a little more uh, controversial in the NBA playoffs. Um, again, this is Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. You can check us out on Facebook. We post your sports stories up to date as often as we can at Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. It's real easy to find us on Facebook. We're out there on the Twitterverse. Real Deal KVP. Check me out. Love to chat with you. You can check us out at the website. www.realdealsportstalkwithkp.com Our calendar's there of upcoming events and shows. It's a great place to see what's going on. Check out uh, thedirtcannon.com. We've got a link to them from the site. We've got a link to the Colorado Crush from the site. Many ways to check us out. You can email the show at uh, rdst.wkp at gmail.com. Email us. Check us out there. There's always ways. All of our links, all of the ways to get in contact with the show are on the website. So uh, definitely check that out. As much as everybody's checking out the NBA playoffs right now, I don't know about you guys, but I was hoping that the hype was going to match the games. Um, I know that's near impossible to happen for the hype of this type of thing, for a trilogy between the top two teams in the league, to for the gameplay to actually live up to that. And, hey, if you're a Golden State fan or a bandwagoner or just like the way they played, that was a great game for you guys the other night. Kevin Durant was going off. Uh, Steph Curry was hitting threes after the first few minutes of the first quarter. Uh, Draymond was making a, some clutch rebounds and tip outs. And hey, Clay Thompson still hasn't gotten going, and you blew out the Cavs game one. Haven't lost a playoff game yet. I understand why Warriors fans are excited right now. I would be too. Coming into this series, I believed that the Warriors were going to sweep Cleveland. Now, I real talk, I still pick Cleveland to win this series, and I've told people, because to me, that would be more interesting. It's more interesting to me for Cleveland to win this championship. What that does to the basketball landscape, what that does to the league, what that does to history, to me, does more than Golden State winning this when that's what's expected. You replace Harrison Barnes with Kevin Durant, you damn well better do better the next season. Whether your coach is sick, whether you got a backup coach in there or not, you're not going to have this team have Durant, Thompson, and Curry all having bad games at the same time. They let their depth get minutes during the season. Now that depth is showing that it's better than Cleveland's depth. Way better than game one. Cleveland's depth came in and looked like a high school team playing against NBA players. But the problem was, they're older than Golden State squad. They were just old and slow. They were once wases. For Cleveland to win this, it's going to be because of LeBron James. Kyrie's going to have to do his thing, of course. Kevin Love is going to have to do his thing, of course. But it's going to be because LeBron James, like last year, decides we're going to win. He's the best player in the world. Had he come around at the time Jordan came around instead of Jordan, if they switch eras, we'd all be saying the same thing about LeBron James that we're arguing about Michael Jordan as to why he's the greatest and nobody else is. I still say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is. That's my opinion. 
You guys know how I feel about who's better between LeBron and Michael. I'll take LeBron. Because to me, what happened in the late 80s through the late 90s was a marketing campaign of all marketing campaigns. They found an athletic guy with a never-say-die attitude, and they made everybody believe that his name was a synonym for basketball. And I'm not going to take away how good he was, because yes, he was good. He did his damn thing. But you take away the marketing power of Nike and what the league put behind him, and you put it behind Magic Johnson before he had to leave due to health issues. You put it behind Dominique Wilkins in the 80s. You put it behind Larry Bird. You put it behind... Clyde Drexler, you put it behind Kobe Bryant, if he's around first, LeBron James, if he's around first, Dwayne Wade, players of this caliber, any of them could have switched places at that time when the league needed a voice, they needed a hero, they needed a guy to get into that NFL money, to pass up baseball who was doing a strike. To not be on the same level as hockey anymore as far as the big four. They found the right guy and ran with it. In my opinion, just about any of those players I just listed could have been interchangeable and been that same marketing campaign. Based on basketball talent. Not based on the rhetoric that so many people now believe is synonymous. Michael Jordan is basketball. Now again, he was a good player. One of the best all time. Not saying that he wasn't. Just saying that you could switch him with players, put the same kind of pressure behind him from the ad campaigns in the league, focusing in on who they are, and the rhetoric and the opinions would be the same. Okay? So tomorrow night, we got game two. Okay? Cleveland's going to have to come out and rebound the ball. You can't give this Golden State team that many second chance opportunities. You can't have them have 17 more shots than you at halftime. That cannot happen. You can't have Zaza decide, I'm going to miss five wide open layups because I think I should pass the ball instead because that's 10 points you would have given up instead of he got six out of that 10. You can't let Kevin Durant run 80 feet down court and nobody check him or get in front of him. And give up dunks. You can take Andre Iguodala hitting a three-pointer every now and then, like he did at the end of the first quarter. Or every now and then he gets loose and gets a dunk. So what? He is overpaid. He hasn't been good since Philadelphia. He thinks he's a big-time shooter. He's not. He's a defensive stopper who's getting old that can dunk. That's always been his game. You'll let him get away with that. Okay? Cleveland can't come out and give out, give up second chance opportunities. Golden State had 30 assists to four turnovers. Cleveland had 20 plus turnovers. I think it was 21 turnovers in the game. Can't have that. Not against this team. Not if you want to have a chance. Last year, game two, Golden State won by 30 something points or 20 something points. And then game three in Cleveland, Cleveland won by 30 points. I don't want to see a series like that. I want to see these games be competitive till the end. That would be great. Not having two great teams just take turns blowing each other out. So, LeBron needs to do his thing. Kyrie needs to do his thing. It it seems simple, right? Kevin Love needs to do his thing. They need to rebound, not turn over the ball. Like, it seems real simple. But Golden State played physical. They played focus, they made passes, they made the extra pass sometimes when they didn't need to, and they got second chances, and they took advantage of them, and they did not take their foot off the pedal until late in the fourth quarter. They, they've seen Cleveland come back from big margins in, in this playoff. So kudos to Golden State. You went out there, you played the game, you had to play to win big, and you succeeded. Cleveland, let's make this series interesting. I don't want to hear all the talk. Well, this is what happened last year. They can still come back and win. They did it last year. I want to hear, okay, game three. Who's going to take two to one lead? That's what I want to hear coming out after tomorrow night. 
It's unfortunate that under our current administration, we have so many emboldened racists and bigots now in this country. Not that there's more in number than there were before, but they now feel like they have a voice. They're now emboldened. They're now spray painting racist words onto the homes of LeBron James. And I bring this up not because, like everybody else talked about this week, that he handled it so well, which he did, but because it, this happens everywhere. Like they alluded, it doesn't matter how much money you make, what position you are in life, racism is in America. This week it happened to a friend of mine, um, his family's house that he grew up in, that his parents still live in, they woke up and had swastikas painted all over their house. They're a Jewish family, they're great people. Um, it's a bunch of BS that stuff like this is happening. People are people. I don't care what the color of your skin is, what language you speak. You are people. If you treat me bad, then I got a problem with you. Not everybody who's from where you're from. This Colin Kaepernick thing, you can tie that into it. He still doesn't have a job. Really, he's not good enough to be a backup for anybody. You're going to tell me he's not being blackballed by all of the white Republican owners in the NFL? Really? The Seahawks are going to come out and say this week that after talking to him that he's a, he's a, a starter caliber player in the NFL, but at this point we're not going to hire him as our backup. Please. It's a political stance, and the other owners who agree with them are scared to let him be on their team at this point. Barring injury, Colin Kaepernick, you are now an activist, sir. I support you, I back you, and I'm sorry this is how your NFL career quite possibly could end, is by you taking a knee. It, it's, just, it's 2017, and we're still having the same conversations about what ignorance is, and about what ignorance does, and about f basically just being afraid of what you don't know. That's racism in a, in a basket, in a bunch, whatever. It's fear. It's based in fear of the unknown. And instead of being brave enough to learn something, you turn it into hate. And that's just dumb. Can't stand it. Don't like it. That's the show. Remember, check out the Circle of Stars first annual football camp Friday, June 9th at Fort Collins High School. Reach out to Eric T. Anderson at 402-305-3724. Email Circle of Stars Football Camp at gmail.com or the website www.circleofstarsacademy.com to find out information about the camp. And until next time, everybody, love yourself, love everybody else, love some sports. And of course, you know how we do each and every time. Be real.